We're in a race against time to save the North Atlantic right whale. We have this critically endangered whale species right off the eastern seaboard of the United States and Canada. Like, barely anybody knows about it. And they're dying at a rate that's greater than the entire species reproduction. We have a very limited view on right whales. They're dealing with an ecosystem that is very hard to figure out. Virtually predator-free with a life expectancy of 70 years, the dramatic dip in the right whale's population has been perplexing for scientists for years. Their population fell 30% in just a decade, dropping from 39 recorded births in 2009 to zero in 2018. And now, fewer than 350 of these creatures remain on the planet. And scientists say they could be extinct within 20 years. But a dedicated team of marine biologists and rescuers are on the Cape, and they are determined to keep that from happening. Their efforts are the focus of a new documentary from NOVA called Saving the Right Whale. I'm joined now by the film's producer, Nadine Pequenza, and one of the voices we just heard from Dr. Charles Stormy Mayo, senior scientist and director of the Right Whale Ecology Program at the Center for Coastal Studies in Provincetown. Welcome to both of you. Congratulations, Nadine, on the episodes. Um, I want to start with, with you, Stormy. Um, what... I know this is kind of the broad question and the whole point of it, but what do we think is happening? Why can we not get enough information to make changes to help these whales? Well, I think um, the, um, the principal difficulty we have uh, across almost all of the issues that, uh, that we confront is that these whales are extraordinarily rare and they live in a huge ecosystem. Uh, and so the encounters that we have with them uh, when we're trying to study them are really few and far between, except for a few locations, ones that were featured uh, in the film. Uh, Cape Cod Bay, where I do my work, is really a remarkable uh, research space. Um, but uh, there are other locations um, where they indeed have been studied, uh, the coast of Florida, as we saw, and now up in the Gulf of St. Lawrence. Uh, that said, um, the whales are so rare and the habitat so large and, and really not well known, uh, areas of great ocean space where we just um, have little information. We don't know that they're there and we don't know what they're doing. So it's, it's really that uh, that underpins uh, our difficulty in understanding them. So, Nadine, obviously the challenges in researching the right whale also would be the challenge in making a production about a right whale uh, and the extinctions and the work to save them. Talk to me about how you approach this project. Yeah, it was indeed a, a challenge for all of the uh, reasons that Stormy just talked about, um, you know, we really didn't know if we were going to be able to get the footage uh, that we needed to introduce people to the North Atlantic right whale because they're so rare. Many people have never seen this whale or even have heard about it. Uh, and so just trying to get access um, to be able to work with the scientists, people like Stormy, uh, and, you know, Barb uh, Zuzuma, someone else we worked with down in the calving area, and Moira Brown up in the Gulf of St. Lawrence. I mean, we really had to work with scientists um, so that one, we would have the information we needed to, that we wanted to impart in the film, but also just to be able to film with the whales. Stormy, how, how is the right whale different from, from other species? I know that's a broad question, but from what we generally yeah. know, what we generally know, the layperson about about whales. Yeah, well, they they look different, they act different, they feed differently, uh, they have in different a different area. They're different in all respects. Uh, these are whales more closely related to the bowheads that uh, that sometimes we see on PBS shows. Um, the bowhead of the of of the uh, western uh, western Arctic. Um, they are animals that feed on plankton, uh, unlike most of the species uh, that uh, we have in New England waters, for instance. Um, 
with that feed on um, on various fishes. Uh, so humpbacks, fin whales, uh, minke whales that we would see maybe on a whale watch or off the shore are fish feeders. So they feed differently. They uh, they really are in all respects very different looking, acting, behaving animals. Uh, than uh, are the whales that uh, most of us are more used to seeing. Nadine, what, what did you learn um, as you were working on this? Was there a preconceived notion that you had going into this or um, uh, something surprising that you learned about the right whale? Well, I was, we filmed something that, uh, maybe I should start with something on a happier note. One of the things that we, what that I learned while I was making the documentary is that, you know, the scientists have been following the whales for many years. They have a catalog that surpasses, I think, any other species in terms of studying, um, you know, where they travel, uh, how they use the areas they're in. And they can identify individual whales because of the callosity patterns on their head. And so you have very unique information about individuals. And so what scientists are starting to see is that even within generations, um, so it seems to be information that somehow is passed down uh, through lineage. Whales will have a preference about where they choose to feed or even where moms and calves will nurse. I mean, obviously there's the, um, there's a particular ground where they, the sorry, the calving ground that's off the coast of Florida and Georgia where they'll, go to have their calves and then nurse them in the initial months. And um, some of the mothers, you know, they like to hang out in particular areas. So the scientists have been able to document and record that over generations, which I, I found very interesting. Stormy, our, um, our, our relationship with animals in general, I think, and our expectation of what we project on them has changed in our lifetime. I was just recently talking with my daughter about our pet dogs and how her relationship and how we treat our pets is very different than how my family and my parents treated our pets in the 1960s and the 1970s. Does, does that emerging um, recognition of them as, as, as beings help us when we're working towards saving them from extinction and understanding it? I, I guess it's a long way of saying, are, are you cautiously optimistic that we're on the right path? Uh, relative to the saving of right whales, um, I'm not particularly optimistic. There doesn't seem to be anything um, obvious that leads to optimism. I do think, though, on your earlier part of your question, um, we save whales because we think of them as sentient beings uh, with, with, I think we, we give them emotions and, and intelligence. Uh, we're probably stretching our knowledge a lot when we make those comments. But because people have uh, gained this very special sense of right whales in particular, but in all whales, um, there has been this move to to save them. And so I think a lot have been saved because of that. I'm not sure it's well placed. Uh, we don't really understand these animals. They're not they're not creatures that we really do understand. We have enough trouble understanding the intelligence of our pets, let alone these creatures that most of us have never seen and will never see. Um, but but I'm happy to have people, if it is a mistake, thinking that they are uh, smarter than humans and more sensitive and whatever, because it has led to their save their saving. The problem is there's a whole ecosystem out there. Uh, there is the great wide ocean, which doesn't, uh, which for many of the animals doesn't have the kind of qualities uh, that 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 causes the saving that it does for right whales. Well, I appreciate both of you. I highly recommend watching this. I ex I'm, I'm really thankful that you joined us to talk about this today. Stormy and Nadine, thanks for joining us. Thank you. Thanks very much. You can watch Saving the Right Whale right now at pbs.org slash Nova.